Hello friends, let's see the venous drainage of the rectum and the related clinical anatomy. The rectum is going to drain into the rectal veins and these rectal veins, they are formed by the plexus is around the lower part of the rectum and the upper part of the anal canal and those plexus are called as the annulus hemorrhoidalis. This annulus hemorrhoidalis, it is a plexus around the lower part of the rectum and the upper part of the anal canal and there are two sets of the plexuses are there one is the internal rectal venous plexus and this internal rectal venous plexus it is situated between the mucous membrane and this internal ni sphincter and the second set of the venous plexus around the rectum is the external rectal venous plexus and that external rectal venous plexus it is situated between the perianal skin and the subcutaneous part of the external anal sphincter. Both these plexuses they are going to communicate with each other and this external rectal venous plexus it is going to continue and drain into the inferior rectal vein. This inferior rectal vein is a systemic vein which is going to drain into the internal iliac vein and through the internal iliac vein ultimately it will drain into the inferior vena cava. So this inferior rectal vein is a systemic vein. This internal rectal venous plexus it is going to drain into the six radicals and this six radicals they fuse to form one superior rectal vein and this superior rectal vein which is going to pierce the posterior wall of the rectum and going to drain into the inferior mesenteric vein. So the superior rectal vein is going to drain into the portal vein. So the six radicals of the superior rectal vein is going to drain the blood from the part of the rectum and the upper part of the anal canal above the pectinate line. So the part above the pectinate line it is going to drain into the portal system and the part of the anal canal below the pectinate line is going to drain into the inferior rectal vein through the external rectal venous plexus and going to drain into the systemic vein. So the area of this pectinate line is the site for the portocaval anastomosis. Along with the superior rectal vein and the inferior rectal vein, the middle rectal veins, they are also going to drain into the internal rectal venous plexus and which is going to drain into the internal iliac vein. Now we have clear idea regarding the venous drainage of the rectum that the superior rectal vein which is going to drain the blood from the rectum and the uh, area of the anal canal above the pectinate line into the inferior mesenteric vein and ultimately into the portal system while the area of the anal canal below the pectinate line is going to drain into the middle rectal vein and the inferior rectal vein and ultimately into the systemic vein. So the site of the portocaval anastomosis is important for understanding of the hemorrhoids. Uh, in case of the portal hypertension, the inferior mesenteric pressure increases and ultimately the pressure of the superior rectal vein, it also increases. And that will lead to the engorgement of the radicals of the superior rectal vein. And this engorgement of the superior rectal veins, they are covered by the mucous membrane and with the further increase in the pressure in case of the portal hypertension, this radical may get punctured and it will lead to the severe bleeding. But this bleeding is painless because the, the area above the pectinate line, it is going to be supplied by autonomic nerves only. So the one of the cause of the painless bleeding from the rectum and anal canal, it is because of the portal hypertension. So in case of the portal hypertension, if we want to see the interior of the rectum in the lithotomy position, if we ask the patient to stay in the lithotomy position, we can see that with the proctoscope, we can see three radicals are enlarged and these three radicals are one at, at the three o'clock position, one at, at the seven o'clock position and one at the eleven o'clock position. So the radicals present at the 3 o'clock position that is left lateral position. Radical at the 7 o'clock position which is at the right posterior position. 
and radical present at the 11 o'clock it is right anterior position these three radicals are most commonly enlarged in case of the internal hemorrhoids now let's see the importance of this rectal veins as this rectal veins this superior rectal vein particularly it is going to drain into inferior mesenteric vein which is valveless and that's why the backflow of the blood in case of the portal hypertension that will lead to the engorgement and the dilatation of the uh, radicals of the superior rectal vein which will lead to the internal hemorrhoids the second important point regarding the superior rectal vein is that it is going to pierce the posterior wall of the rectum around 7 cm above the anal canal and because the superior rectal vein is going to pierce the posterior wall of the rectum in case of the chronic constipation the straining at the time of the defecation will lead to the engorgement of the uh, radicals of the superior rectal vein which is also one of the cause of the internal hemorrhoids so this is all about the venous drainage of the rectum along with its clinical anatomy